It's time for Radio Theater, brought to you by Latitude 59. That's right, a short story by moi, sponsored by Latitude 59 in the Lakeside Mall in Homer. Latitude with a whole new attitude. I saw on Facebook the other day, somebody was asking for recommendations of a lunch place. Where to get lunch in Homer? And I'm telling you, over and over again, Latitude 59 came up. And then people start talking about their breakfast burritos and their wraps and salads and coffee. It's great. It's 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 just fantastic. You'll if you haven't been to Latitude since they reopened at the Mall at Almers and Homer, you're missing out. Now it's time for your divine right to be rich. Gary was stressed out of his mind beyond imagination. The mortgage payment was due, and he didn't have the money. After paying for a new transmission and well, sales are slow lately, Gary was broke. He'd never missed a single payment in his life. Every day, though, he was reading headlines filled with news of foreclosures and people losing their homes all across the nation. Gary could not let that happen to his family. But what could he do? It was day 29 of being late on his mortgage. After 30 days, they could file a notice of default. Three phone calls later, Gary knew he was up against a machine. Nobody cared about him. There were no humans left at the bank, only automatons collecting blood from borrowers, Gary thought. On a last-ditch effort, Gary decided to try one more time. He went into the bank in person. He waited in the lobby area for a few minutes. He was in no hurry to be rejected yet again. A smiling woman came around the corner and greeted Gary. Gary looked down at his feet, something he'd been doing a lot of lately. As the world could see, he was quite sure this badge of shame he wore. He couldn't look people in the eye anymore. I'm, I'm here to talk about my mortgage, he said. She put out her hand and said, Hi, I'm Julie. Maybe I can help you. Come on with me. Gary dutifully followed Julie into her office. Closing the door behind them, Julie invited Gary to sit down at a large round table. This office was huge. The dark paneled walls were filled with art, a massive window overlooked a street and park just beyond. That's when Gary realized he had stumbled into the president's office. He remembered now having read Julie's name on the newsletter the bank sends out every month. The ever-present pain in Gary's stomach was suddenly more acute. Julie sensed his discomfort. She offered him a coffee. No, I've, I've had too much already, thank you. Well then, what's on your mind? How may I serve you? Julie was sincere. Surely she had more important things to do than help me, Gary thought. Well, I, I need a little more time on my mortgage payment. See, I'm really hurting right now, and if I can have just one more month, I'll be able to get caught up. Julie was thoughtful for a moment and then said, What makes you think that, Gary? What will be different next month? Now, there was no judgment in her voice either. Julie really wanted to know what was Gary's plan. Well, I... I just think I can turn things around. I mean, at work, things are going to pick up, and I feel like when that happens, I'm really hoping... Let me just stop you right there, Gary. Julie said, Look, you seem like a nice person. Would you do something for me? Gary looked at her and said, Well, what? She stood and she walked over to her bookshelf and scanned the shelves. She then saw the title she was looking for and retrieved the old, faded book. She sat down next to Gary at the round table the very table where she had no more than an hour ago signed a $3 million deal with another bank customer. She opened the old faded book to a page bookmarked with a $100 bill. Gary thought, well, that's extravagant. Julie pointed to a sentence that was underlined and highlighted. She said, please read this, Gary. He looked it over and he read the line to himself. And she said, no, no, I mean aloud. Would you please read that aloud? Gary did as he was asked. I can have everything, including these results, because success is my divine heritage. I, I don't understand, he honestly said. Gary, what results do you want? And do you believe you deserve them? Do you believe that being here today, seeking mercy, is your lot in life? Or do you have a larger vision? Do you dream of more, beyond enough? Do you have a vision for your life where you can grow and grow into that vision? Gary's eyes were cast down again. You, yes, you, Gary, deserve and can achieve success. It's your divine heritage. Whatever you can conceive and believe, you can achieve. Gary, it takes belief. Do you believe? 
Gary looked up, making eye contact. She said it again. She said, Gary, you have the right of success, a divine right of success, of plenty and more than enough health, wealth, and prosperity. Gary, there isn't a shortage of money in the world. You have the divine right to your share of it. You have the divine right to success. Gary, I'm extending your loan for one month and it's going to be penalty free, but it's on one condition. Anything, Gary said, anything, you name it. Julie's eyes narrowed on Gary's. I want you today to write out a plan, a written plan of what you want and what you're willing to give in exchange for it. And you must back this plan, Gary, with vision and belief. Do we have a deal? Yes. Gary stood and shook Julie's hand firmly. Yes, we have a deal. Within two weeks of Gary's meeting with Julie, Gary had made enough money to pay two mortgage payments ahead, and he was completely caught up. He declared that he'd never fall behind again. Gary's boss came to him a few months later. Having noticed a new energy and vitality in Gary's life, he made him an offer to buy the company. This offer was one he couldn't refuse. Julie and Gary would do many more deals into the future. Gary never forgot the lesson Julie taught him that day. You can have everything, including the results you want, because success is your divine heritage. Big thank you to Latitude 59 for sponsoring our radio theater. I'm Chris Story, along with Mr. David Webb, bringing you what my mom calls the greatest show on earth. Mortars Moment with Rhonda Johnson, straight ahead. Straight ahead.